Welcome to my Secret Place Devotion with Oyix Alfred. The Word of God is alive and equipped to change your life. Good morning. Let's pray for divine protection today. According to Zechariah chapter 2 verse 5, God said that he will be a wall of fire around us as a means of protection. So Father, thank you so much for today. As your people go out, Lord, I ask that you surround them as a wall of fire in the name of Jesus. Amen. You know, Jesus taught his disciples and his followers that the spiritual discipline of self-denial is required if you are actually serious about being a disciple. Now, because the cost of discipleship is very, very high, that's why the first requirement for discipleship is to first of all decide that you no longer want to remain in an outer court relationship with Jesus that you actually want to have a closer walk with Jesus. And so Jesus, in Matthew chapter 16, verse 24, the same concept is in Luke chapter 9, verse 23. Jesus said to his disciples, whoever wants to be my disciple, that indicates making a decision, number one. He said, whoever wants to be my disciple must deny themselves. That's number two. So the first requirement is decision. Second one is self-denial. And this self-denial is what Jesus exemplified throughout his life especially in john chapter 13 when he had to wash the feet of his disciples in fact his entire life is self-denial but that particular one really really stands out to my mind because jesus you know is this is god the bible says everything was made by him and for him so the heavens the earth he created everything and then one day he comes to bow before the very one he created now this is the height of self-denial he bowed by washing their feet this is god I made everything. He came down and knelt down because you can't wash somebody's feet standing. You have to kneel down to wash his feet. So Jesus, a whole Jesus Christ, knelt down before his disciples. Imagine the pastor kneeling down before his followers to wash their feet. You know, you can't see it today, but that is the kind of life that Jesus wants us to live. And if they, he didn't wash their head or their face or their hands, he washed their feet, the lowest part of you. That's what Jesus knelt to do. He did this to exemplify the life of self-denial i remember praying a prayer oh god i want to get deeper with you take me to a deeper walk i want to be closer i want a deeper walk with you and the response to that fasting and prayer i was doing and asking god for more of him he began to talk to me about self-denial living a life daily where you constantly deny self no wonder apostle paul in galatians chapter 2 verse 20 said you know that he's no more alive but he's crucified with christ and in first corinthians chapter 15 31 he said i die daily this is a daily thing that you do so for a christian self-denial actually means renouncing yourself as a center of existence i know this thing goes against the natural inclination of the human person our natural and our default disposition is to put ourselves as the center of everything but you know when you begin to live the life of self-denial you now recognize jesus as the center of everything actually from the moment you are born into the family of jesus christ self-denial is meant to become the daily exercise of your life for the rest of your existence on earth unfortunately that's not the case today because the moment you get born again the pulpit actually is the one that you know causes you to start focusing on how god wants to give you a new job a new car a new wife more money those are the kind of things that the church focuses on. So a new believer is looking to God for what he can get, what he can draw. But if you study the disciples, Jesus multiplied fish for Peter. And there and then he told Peter, come and follow me. And Peter left his business, left everything and began to follow Jesus. We were not told he was giving another business. Because the normal thing is, oh, give God your money and God will give you back another money in response. But we didn't see till the time Peter died that his business was restored. As a matter of fact, what happened to Peter is he died a physical death. This is the reward for somebody who gave up his business. You know, if it's today, you can't see things like that. Because we're not teaching people about discipleship, meaning self-denial. That is what Jesus is talking about. That is what he requires us to do. That's why we don't look anything like Jesus. Because we're not doing what he asked us to do. We are not disciples of Jesus. We think discipleship means just start attending discipleship classes, start going to church regularly. It's beyond that. That's for baby Christians. When you really want a deep walk with God, then you must begin to discuss self-denial. The truth and the truth and the truth of the matter is that the call to Christianity is actually the call to death. When Jesus calls you, he calls you to die. First of all, 
self-denial die to self and then it might lead to you losing your life in the course of discipleship it starts being i i i i i no it now becomes christ 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 what your pastor probably hasn't told you about the christian pursuit is that a follower of jesus must be prepared to die if death is where the path of discipleship leads so i'll show you from the scripture in revelation chapter 2 verse 10 jesus was writing a letter to the churches and it's not old testament neither is it before jesus died this is after jesus died and resurrected and ascended and he began to write letters through apostle john to the churches so this church is just like they came into existence before today that's the early church so jesus appears to them through the letter and says do not be afraid of what you're about to suffer meaning jesus recognized that we're going to suffer so suffering is part of the package with your bible these things are there he said i tell you the devil will put some of you in prison to test you why is the devil put you in prison to test you because talk is cheap anybody can say oh i love jesus jesus sent of my life jesus is everything anybody can say that even a criminal and i'm robber anybody can say jesus is lord jesus is my life jesus is everything wait until you are put to test you are put to trial that's when we know who really jesus is the center of everything so jesus tells them say you will suffer persecution for 10 days he said be faithful even to the point of death and i will give you the victor's crown this generation knows nothing about this level of discipleship this generation knows nothing about this quality of commitment to jesus he said even if it's going to cost you your life jesus said do it if it's going to cost you everything do it it is worth it so how does self-denial express itself yesterday we looked at how self expresses itself so today let's take a look at the expressions of self-denial fasting is one of them it is a discipline where you deny yourself food and comfort for the advancement of the kingdom or advancement of the relationship with jesus another one is giving to the poor and needy it's a form of self-denial another one is when you stay in the place of prayer you are denying yourself another one is when you live modestly rather than indulging excessive luxury in every area of your life it is self-denial yes you can afford that gucci bag or that chanel bag or that prada shoe or whatever and you can live in that massive house where you say you know what i want to live modestly so that i can use the other ones to advance the cause of the kingdom it is self-denial but i think that one of the most significant expressions of self-denial is how we love and esteem our brothers and our sisters more than ourselves it is actually the center of our walk with the lord see what the bible tells us in philippians chapter 2 verse 8 to 9 he says let each of you look not on your own interest but also the interest of others have this mind among yourself which is in christ jesus who though he was in the form of god did not count equality with god a thing to be grasped instead he emptied himself by taking the form of a servant being born in a likeness of men being found in human form he humbled himself by becoming obedient even to the point of death even death on the cross i'm reading from the esv version of the scripture of philippians chapter 2 you know verse 4 to 8 is actually where i read so self-denial means seeking the good of others before looking out for yourself if you study ruth and naomi when ruth followed naomi it was a practice of self-denial for the benefit of her mother-in-law when esther put her life at risk to save her people she demonstrated self-denial you know when the scripture teaches us in romans 14 21 that we should deny ourselves for the sake of those who are weak in faith all of this is talking about self-denial when you are willing to sacrifice your time your energy your rights your position your reputation your privileges your comfort even your very life for the sake of christ you are actually expressing the life of self-denial you are exemplifying what it means to die to self and you are living the life of a disciple of jesus christ now that you know how self-denial expresses itself are you still ready to be a disciple of jesus how do you get to this point simple you deny self by going to the spirit of god and say holy spirit now that i know what it means help me i want to live this life i but i can't do it on my own i ask you to help me and then you start paying attention to yourself 
the moment your opinion comes up against Christ, you say, no, 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 it's self-denial, you bring it down. The moment you are before people and you're thinking about yourself, you say, no, 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 it's not about me, it's about Christ, it's about his people. So as you constantly do that, the Holy Spirit will keep helping you. And after some time, this becomes your default mode. At that point, you cannot call yourself a disciple of Jesus Christ. So from next week, we're going to be looking at the third condition for discipleship. So far, we've looked at number one, decision. Number two, self-denial. There are other conditions that Jesus mentioned. Thank you for listening. God bless you. For other life-changing messages, you can now download the app Rev Oyik Speaks from Play Store for Android phone users or Apple Store for iOS users. You can also follow us on Instagram, YouTube, and Telegram, all on the handle Oyik's Alfred. <music>